This is the first video on Laplace transforms. So an introduction. Laplace transforms are a tool that is used for linear systems analysis and design. Now as with all tools, and you'll be taught this by many staff, they are designed to make some jobs easier. Obviously you need to decide for which jobs Laplace is an appropriate tool. Now you're strongly advised to become fluent in Laplace because the analysis and design of linear systems is relatively straightforward if you use this tool, but often not straightforward without this tool. And obviously a lot of engineering courses require you to use it. Now as with most videos that have been produced in this series, the intention is not to give a detailed and rigorous presentation that a mathematician might like, but rather a pragmatic one that engineering students can use. First then, what's the definition of Laplace? Well you'll see I've put it in this box here. We've got this interesting formula, the Laplace of f of t, which I'm going to define as capital F brackets S, is given as the integral between naught and infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Now, for the purest among you, there is a slightly more complex formula, this one here. However, I'm not going to bother with that because I think that's more for the mathematicians to worry about. Now, I'm also going to make the point, you can see at the bottom, that these videos will give a few examples, but not lots and lots. If you really need more examples, then please do look in the textbooks. So common single signals. Within linear systems behaviours, there are a number of common signals. And thus, what we need is to know the Laplace transform for those signals, because they're the ones that we're going to be using all the time. So what might these signals be? Well, the signal 1, or a constant, and that could be a constant of 3 or 4, obviously. Signals like t and t squared and t cubed, and so on. Signals like e to the minus a t or e to the b t, sine omega t, cos omega t, t e to the minus a t or t sine omega t, e to the minus a t, sine omega t, and e to the minus a t, cos omega t. Now, this list isn't particularly long, but a key point that I'm going to make here is it's unlikely that you will come across a signal that's not in this list if you are just doing an introductory course on control or behaviours or something of that nature. Because most staff don't want to complicate things unnecessarily, especially when you're doing problems by hand. Now, the next video will, on this video, will now derive the Laplace transforms for the most common signals in this list, and we'll do them one at a time. The later videos in the series will cover the slightly more complex signals, and all we're going to do is use this definition here. So there's nothing secret, no tricks, it's just apply the definition and plug into this formula the signal that you've got. Now, just some warnings. With conventional Laplace transforms, the signal is taken to be zero in negative time. Now, you might say, oh, but my signal wasn't zero in negative time. This is somewhat confusing. So, alternatively, you can take the viewpoint that the transform is only defined for positive time. So, it doesn't tell you anything about what maybe happened when t was less than zero. So, the most common signal you're going to come across is a step or, and I'm going to write it here, a constant. The two are viewed as the same because a constant, which is only defined in positive time, can be written down as a step signal. So you'll see the step we've got here, it goes from 0 to 1 at time t equals 0. So I've only defined it for t greater than or equal to 0. Now what I'm going to do next is simply plug this in to the definition for Laplace. So the plus of 1 is the integral between 0 and infinity of 1 times e to the minus st dt. Now there's a subtle point you'll see in some books, we're going to assume that s is greater than 0. Again, I'm going to leave that for the mathematicians and the purist and just pass by that. So when I do this integration, this is what I get. Minus 1 over s, e to the minus st, with limits 0 and infinity. Now if you put in the limit of infinity, you'll find that you get the answer 0. And so then what I'm going to get is minus 
minus 1 over s, and then you've got essentially e to the 0, which is 1, and so the answer you get is 1 over s. So what you get is the Laplace transform of a unit step is given by 1 over s. The next common signal you might come across is an exponential. So here you'll see I've done e to the minus t, and again you'll notice I've only plotted it or defined it in positive time. So again, all I'm going to do if I want to do Laplace of a signal, something like e to the minus at, is plug it into the formula. So there's the integral, the integral between naught and infinity, e to the minus at times e to the minus st dt. And obviously there's two exponentials there, so I can combine them, and that gives me the integral between naught and infinity of e to the minus s plus at dt. If I do that integral, then what I get is this, minus 1 over s plus a times e to the minus s plus a times t. So again, if I plug in infinity, I will get 0, and then I'm going to get minus, minus 1 over s plus a times 0, which tells me that the Laplace of e to the minus a t equals 1 over s plus a. And in fact, this particular formula is the one that you will see most common, or perhaps that one and the step. So now some questions. Let's see if we can solve for these using what we've just derived on the previous slide. So the previous slide, we said the Laplace of e to the minus a t gives you 1 over s plus a. So here, you'll see I've got a equals minus 5 because this was written as an e to the minus at, so the answer is going to be 1 over s minus 5. Here, you'll see I've got a equals 0.2, so the answer is going to be 1 over s plus 0.2. And you'll see how straightforward that is. Once you've derived the generic solution, there it is, you can just use that thereafter. What about minus 4? Well, clearly minus 4 is minus 4 times a unit step. Now, the Laplace of a unit step was 1 over s, so the Laplace of minus 4 times a unit step will be minus 4 over s. So again, you see how straightforward this is once you understand the key results. Now, linear operations or superposition. Hopefully, it's obvious to you that if you add two signals together, so here I've added a1 times f1 to a2 times f2, then the Laplace of that sum is the sum of the two Laplaces. I hope I don't need to prove that, and you should be able to write it down and convince yourself. Now, what this means is that if I got a signal which was a combination, here it is something like x equals 2e to the 3t plus 4e to the 6t, and I wanted the Laplace transform of that, I can do it as twice the Laplace transform of e to the 3t plus 4 times the Laplace transform of e to the 6t, which is going to give me 2 over s minus 3 plus 4 over s minus 6. And again, I hope you can see how straightforward that is. Because you know the Laplace of simple exponentials, then you can do those two bits by inspection and then just add the results. So here's a couple of examples for you to try. Find the Laplace transforms for the following signals. And what you need to do is just write Laplace of minus 2, that's a constant, is going to be minus 2 over s. And Laplace of 0.4 e to the minus 3t is going to be 0.4 over s plus 3, and therefore the result, I'll just squeeze it in here, is going to be minus 2 over s plus 0.4 over s plus 3. Now clearly, you could give those two terms a common denominator by multiplying up, etc, etc, but I'm not going to bother with that at this point here. For the next one down here, then if I just do this more quickly, the Laplace of the first signal is going to be 0.2 over s plus 4. The Laplace of the second signal is going to be 0.6 over s minus 2. And again here, you could multiply up and write, therefore, I've got 0.2 into s minus 2 plus 0.6 into s plus 4 
divided by s plus 4 times s minus 2. Another common signal you might come across is a ramp. Now this is much less common than a step, but it does occur occasionally. So you're asking yourself, if I want the Laplace transform of a ramp, I need to do this integral here. The integral between 0 and infinity, t e to the minus st dt. So how will I do that? Well here you need integration by parts. So I've written down the formula for you in case you've forgotten it. The integral of u dv dt dt equals uv at the limits minus the integral v times du dt dt. So here I'm going to apply that formula to the integral that I've got here. So you'll notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to make t, this t term, equal to u and the e to the minus st equal to the v. Okay? Oh sorry, equal to um, dv dt. I've written that in the wrong place, haven't I? That's a bit careless of me. I do apologise. So e to the minus st is going to be the dv dt term. So if I do that, you'll see the bits that are just calculated at the limits, the uv, is t e to the minus st over minus s evaluated at naught and infinity. And you'll notice that just gives you 0. OK? And then if I calculate this v du dt, I end up with this particular integral here. Now what you'll notice is that particular integral can be rearranged to 1 over s times the integral between 0 and infinity e to the minus st. Clearly s does, is, is not an integration variable because that's t, so I can take it out of the integrand, which is what I've done here. And then if you look at this, you'll see this integral between 0 and infinity e to the minus st is just what we did for the unit step. So by inspection, that integral gives me 1 over s, and therefore the result is 1 over s squared. So there's the Laplace of a ramp, 1 over s squared. Now, there are other signals you might come across. I think they're pretty rare myself, but it's possible t squared, t cubed, and so on. I'm not going to derive those. You can do that yourself if you really want to. But the sort of formulas you get, Laplace of t squared is 2 over s cubed. Laplace of t cubed is 2 times 3 over s to the 4. And in more general terms, Laplace of t to the n, n vectorial over s to the n plus 1. And you'll notice this pattern here is quite useful. Um, so if you see anything over s to a power, you immediately think this corresponds to a 1 or a t or t squared and so on. So a summary. We've introduced the concept of Laplace transforms and we've said just use the definition, keep it simple. And we've derived Laplace transforms for some simple power functions, the step, the ramp, and also for exponentials. So the sorts of things you've got, Laplace of e to the minus at gives you a 1 over s plus a. Laplace of an e to the bt gives you a 1 over s minus b. So you'll see convergent exponentials, you get an s plus a. Divergent exponentials, you get an s minus b. Laplace of a step is 1, and Laplace of a t to the n, n factorial over s to the n plus 1. And we've also demonstrated that superposition applies, that is, the Laplace of a sum is the sum of the Laplace.